Let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by reviewing the overall structure of the FPGA main VI. We have a single process loop here. This is a single cycle timed loop and it runs perpetually. I have a 4-bit Johnson counter which is specified by VHDL code as well as a simple NOT gate also in VHDL code. And then I'm using Xilinx IP block to make the binary counter that enables the Johnson counter. Let's begin by locating the key sub palettes. The IP integration node is located right here. The, the Xilinx IP integration node is located right here. And specifically, we look for one of the counters, and there's binary counter right there. Now let's learn how to configure the IP integration node for combinational logic. I'm using just very simple code here for illustration purposes. This is a NOT gate. It has input X and an output Y, and Y is simply the complement of X. Well, so we'll start this from the beginning. Place the IP integration node. Add the synthesis file. Add your VHDL code. The entity and architecture labels look correct. And let's generate the support files. This is combinational logic, so it has no clock signal. We can move on. It has no reset signal, again, because it's combinational. Let's just check the direction is correct. X is an input and Y is an output. So there's X and there's Y. Now let's run through the same procedure, but uh, seeing how it's different when we do a sequential logic block. Here I have a Johnson counter. There is its clock signal. It has a clock enable. It has an asynchronous reset. It has a little bit of control functions and then the output Q. So this is the code for an asynchronous clear. Here's the code for the synchronous clock as well as the clock enable. If the clock enable is active, you execute that code. Otherwise, you just maintain the output with its uh, current state. Again, let's start by going with the initial IP integration node. As we did before, I will add the VHDL code. That looks correct. Let's generate our support files. And here's where we need to make some decisions. The clock signal looks correct. The enable signal is clock enable. It's proposing that reset is synchronous reset, but it is not. It's actually an asynchronous reset. And it's active high. Direction of all the ports looks correct. The output is a 4-bit unsigned integer. Now let's configure the Xilinx IP block for our binary counter. This process can be a little bit lengthy, so I speed through that for the sake of expediency. You have options for how you'd like to implement it. You can either use the uh, basic um, or generic FPGA fabric, or you can see whether or not you get some benefit from using some of the DSP48 modules. 
specify the output width, the increment, increment value, and then we need a synchronous output to indicate when the counter has rolled over. Coming back to the symbol, you'll notice that when you make various configuration options, the symbol updates accordingly. All right, the clock signal is clock, or CLK, that works. Um, I, I would advise you to pay attention to reading some of the fine print down there just to make sure you're making good decisions for your own particular design. This design does not have a synchronous reset, and I'm not using an asynchronous reset. Again, we have a little bit of commentary down there that you might want to study. We have a pair of outputs, and we are ready to go. Again, there's a threshold that tells us when the counter rolls over.